शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मराचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा प्लीज Excuse me. <coughs> Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Unaktu Sahaviryan Karava Vahai Tejasvi Navadhita Mastuma Vidvisha Vahai Om Shanti 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 Very good. Welcome back. Welcome also to many students who are attending these classes online. Um, we, I think, will be concluding this current chapter, chapter 8 of the Uddhava Gita. This is a very special chapter for obvious reason that Sri Krishna appears here and here alone as a hamsa, as a divine swan. I think the scholars get into a big argument about it. Is it, is it a swan or is it a goose? Believe it or not, scholars argue about this. I f better th we have better things <laughs> to argue about anyway. We'll, we'll call Hamsa Swan here. And uh, for that reason, the entire text is also called Hamsa Gita. And uh, the last topic here that we come to is, not surprisingly, enlightenment. This is where Sri Krishna has assumed the form of the Hamsa, of the Swan, to give spiritual instruction to Brahmaji and his four mind-born sons. So that's what we're, uh, we're seeing. And these last verses are in this really long meter. And this meter is, allows for the expression of so much more sophisticated thought. When you're dealing with these very short quarters, having eight syllables each, uh, the author is limited by what you can say in those eight syllables. Here we have 14 syllables in a line to work with, and so the teachings that we've seen in the prior class, and we have just two more verses in this longer meter. Um, we'll see some very profound teachings, and then after these two verses, then we come to the closing verses of the chapter. We'll see that in just a moment, and we'll begin where we left off. <clears throat> Deham chanashwaram avastitam uttitam va Deham chanashwaram avastitam uttitam va Siddho na pasyati yato dhyamagat swarupam Siddho na pasyati yato dhyamagat Sarupam Swagamat, right. Daivara Petamuta Daiva Vasharu Petam Daivara Petamuta Daiva Vasharu Petam Vaso Yatha Parikritam Mari Ramarandaha Vaso Yatha Parikritam Mari Ramarandaha All right, we'll start in the second line talking about one who is Siddhaha perfected. We use it to refer to an enlightened person but it literally means one who has reached a state of perfection. So that siddhaha, 
How did he or she reach that state of perfection at the end of the second line? Adhyagamat, having discovered, having understood, swarupam, one's true nature. And that siddha, that enlightened person, after discovering one's true nature as Satchirananda Atma, the true self, that siddha na pashyati does not see, first line, deham. An enlightened person doesn't see one's own body. Should we take that literally? That doesn't make any sense. Remember, sometimes we forget the obvious. This is poetry. Poetry is well known for not being literal. So we shouldn't try to force literal meanings here. Napashyati deham doesn't see the body as oneself. That's it. Doesn't see the body as being oneself. Generally, you see the body. This is my body, this is my arm, this is my leg. The enlightened person says, this is a body. This is its arm. This is its leg. Now, the enlightened person may or may not use that language. There's no need to use artificial language. If you're enlightened, you don't have to show off, <laughs> as, as it were. And, and, and by the way, you know that there are some gurus that had this affectation. They would say, this is tired. This is hungry. This would like some tea. I, I don't know. To me, that's an affectation. I could be wrong, but if you're really enlightened, you don't need to adopt such artificial language. It is what it is. So, the enlightened person, napashyati deham, this body, which is obviously nashwaram, decaying. If every day we live, we move one day closer. You got it. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> My guru liked a joke. He, he said, notice when you go to, if, if you go to a uh, cemetery, you'll always see on the tombstone a dash between the dates. You were born 1953, dash, and then the date of death. And he, he said, obviously, that's because you're born on such and such a date, and then you dash to death. <laughs> It was very obvious to him. <laughs> okay. So, this body, which is nashwaram, which is mortal, constantly decaying, whether this body is avastatam, whether this body is seated, uttatamva, or running around, standing, it makes no difference. The body is not me. That's the vision of the enlightened person. And that further, about that body, in the third line now, daivat upetam uta, whether this body, um, upetam, uh, daivat apetam, sorry, uh, upetam and apetam have opposite <laughs> meanings, okay. So whether this body apetam dies, daivat, due to karma, or uta, or daiva vashat upetam, whether it is born again due to karma, the enlightened person na pashyati. Loosely we could say the enlightened person doesn't care. What difference does it make? Um, a personal observation. Many, many questions come about the doctrine of karma. And I understand why. We live in a complicated world and we're trying to make sense out of our lives. So it's natural that uh, many people have questions about the doctrine of karma. But from my standpoint, and my standpoint is perhaps not typical, but from my standpoint, 
who cares? So if you figure, you know, if you're going through a bad time, if it's due to bad karma, if it's due to some shani dasha, if it's due to your neighbor being very obnoxious, what difference does it really make? It's, just, it's still a bad time, and you're still struggling with it because Vedanta hasn't gone insufficiently. And to me, it seems like when our attention goes out, why, 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 why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? That is a distraction. It takes our minds away from solving the central problem of suffering. So the enlightened person, Napashyati, doesn't care about, what, about the body, whether it's coming, going, what happens to the body, nor does the enlightened person care about karma. What is, is. What isn't, isn't. That's just the way the world is. The enlightened person has a very objective view about the world and about the body. And then uh, Shankara ends with an interesting uh, uh, Shankara. What class is this? <laughs> this is not Upadesha Sahasri. This is our Uddhava Gita being taught by Sri Krishna in the form of a swan. But I said Shankara because these long meter verses are so profound, they sound to me like Shankara. It doesn't sound like Sri Krishna. It's like Sri Krishna is suddenly using really big words and really high, complicated language. But it is Sri Krishna in the form of a swan. And he gives this metaphor at the end, which is very interesting. Yatha, just like one who is Madira Mada Andaha. Who is Mada Andaha, who is blind with delusion, Madira. You, <laughs> you can figure that out. Alcohol. Okay, so a person who is, we just say drunk in, in English. So a person who is drunk, yatha, just like a person who is drunk, who is, who is, just looking at the grammar, sorry. Who, uh, whose vasaha is parikritam, whose clothes, parikritam, slip off. And as a kind of an obscure expression, I have a feeling it's a reference to, of course, in, in long ago in India, every, every, most males wore uh, dhotis, not the pajamas that you see sometimes in the north, or nowadays it's all pants, even for the women. <laughs> so, yeah, this is modern culture, and it's fine. But in, to understand the, the humor here, you have to imagine a man wearing a dhoti who's drunk. <laughs> you get it. It's very easy to step on the hem of your dhoti and it falls right off. <laughs> so if you're drunk, that's, that's uh, apparently a common thing to happen. So the drunk steps on the hem of, of his dhoti, it falls off. He doesn't notice. Napashyati! <laughs> this is the metaphor. <laughs> what a metaphor. I think Sri Krishna is, is doing this deliberately to introduce some humor into this very heavy topic. So the, to the point here is the enlightened person is not, let, let's change the language, is not focused on the body, what happens to it, the nature of karma, just it, inattentive is even a better word. Just like the drunk is inattentive about his clothing, the enlightened person is inattentive, so to speak, about the um, about body, or what happens to the body. Okay, next. Uh, next. Oh, that's up. You don't do it. <laughs> I have to tell myself what to do here. Okay. 
Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Deho pi daiva vashaga kalu karma yavata. Deho pi daiva vashaga kalu karma yavata. Swarambakam prati samikshata eva sasuhu. Swarambakam prati samikshata eva sasuhu. Tamsa prapansha madhi ruda samadhi yogaha. Tamsa prapansha madhi ruda samadhi yogaha. Swapnam punar nabhajate prati buddha vastuhu. Swapnam punar nabhajate prati buddha vastuhu. And this is the last of the teaching verses in this, in this long meter. And talking about the enlightened person, for that enlightened person, dehaha, the body, connected to the last word of the next line, the body, sa asuhu, along with the breath, along with the prana, the body, along with its prana, is daiva vasha gaha. It is under the control, vashaga, under the control of daiva. Daiva here is a reference to. Karma. We saw that many, many times in Mahabharata. Daiva represents karma. It means that, that which is of a non-worldly source. That which is of a worldly source, we could say is manushya, caused by human beings. But that which is not caused by human beings, that which comes from elsewhere, is daiva. So the word is used for karma here. So this body, which is daiva vashagaha, which is under the control of karma, kalu indeed, yavat, as long as, middle of the second line, prati samikshata, as long as it waits. What is it waiting for? <laughs> we said before, each day you're getting closer to that date. So it is waiting for the last day. Nice American English. The, the body is hanging out, or hanging on, even better, hanging on until that last day. That last day due to karma, due to one's, what kind of karma? Swarambakam means prarabdham. You're born with certain karmas which determine the length of this lifetime. It's called prarabdha karma. So until that karma is exhausted, the body hangs on. But the enlightened person doesn't hang on to the body. That's the key. You can have a body without hanging. On. For the enlightened person, there is no attachment. And saha, that enlightened person, let's pick up some words that are scattered around. Last word, prati buddha vastuhu. Saha, that enlightened person who is prati buddha vastuhu, who is awoken with regard to reality, means enlightened. So that enlightened person who is, <laughs> jump up now to the third line, the person who is adhirudha samadhi yogaha, the one who is adhirudha, established in samadhi yoga, not necessarily established in samadhi, meditation. There are several ways to understand samadhi. Here perhaps, Let's just be clear. An enlightened person is not one who's always established in meditation. Why? Well, first reason is after about 30 or 40 days, if all he's done is meditate, you die. Which means whoever is left 
is not enlightened. <laughs> Which means teachers today who still live, who are not always absorbed in meditation, would you say, oh, they're still here, therefore they're not enlightened? That's just silly reasoning. So this idea of being always immersed in meditation is, is fictitious. Here, samadhi means knowledge of your true self. That's a context, a contextual meaning. An enlightened person who is always established in knowledge of one's true nature. What about that enlightened person? Back down to the fourth line. Punaha na bhajate, that enlightened person will Napunaha, never again, bhajate, resort to prapancham. Prapancham means the world, and in this reference, tam prapancham refers to the body. The enlightened person never again becomes attached to the body. The body may hold on, but he or she doesn't hold on to the body. Why? The body is swapnam, like a dream. Not real, not taken seriously by that enlightened person. So, with these two verses, we come to an end, come to the end, not the end of the chapter, but the end of Sri Krishna's spiritual instruction to Brahmaji and his four mind-born sons. Um, this has been a very profound discussion. They asked how to transcend the guru gunas, and Sri Krishna went very deeply into the process of gaining enlightenment. So that topic having come to an end, now Sri Krishna has some final words for Brahmaji and his four sons. Now we go back to the short meter. Mayai taruptam vo vipra Mayai taruptam vo vipra Guhyam yat sankhya yoga yoho Guhyam yat sankhya yoga yoho Jani tam hagatam yagnyam Jani tamam gatam yagnyam Yushmad dharma vivakshaya Yushmad dharma vivakshaya Vipraha o Brahmanas uh, He is addressing mostly the, the four sons of Brahma are known as Brahmanas, members of that caste. He says, O Brahmanas, maya tad etat uktam, etat this which I, which uktam, which has been told maya by me, vaha to you, all of this referring to all of the teachings that we've just completed, all of this that, that I have just now taught to you, all of this is guhyam often means secret, but not here. Guhyam is, is that which is hidden, meaning that which is inside. Like a seed is guhyam inside a fruit. That, that sense. The seed is hidden, not exactly hidden, but it also has that meaning. But here it has more of the sense of inside. Inside here means essence. So the guhyam, I have, I have, what I have just taught you now, is the guhyam, the essence of what? Yat Sankhya Yoga Yoho. That which is taught by Sankhya and Yoga. Sankhya, you might remember from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, means jnanam, knowledge, spiritual wisdom. Yoga here refers to spiritual practice in general. So what I've just now told you, uh, Sri Krishna says, is the guhyam, the essence of sankhya, spiritual wisdom, and the essence of yoga, spiritual practice. Then, he's, then he goes on to say, janita ma, ma, me. You should know me, the one who is agatam, the one who has come here, you should know me to be yagnyam, which is very odd. 
unless you know that one of the... You need a dictionary. You don't need a dictionary. Any teacher <laughs> needs a dictionary. Because if you go reading all the definitions of yagnam, you probably know the main meaning of sacrifice, correct? But if you go down the list, probably about halfway down the list, maybe about the eighth or ninth or tenth meaning for yagnam will be, usually the dictionaries abbreviate everything, N period. N period means name. N period of Vishnu. Yajna is a name of Vishnu. So we have to know, just as in every language, words have different meanings in different contexts. So he tells the uh, Brahmaji and his sons, you should know that I am Lord Vishnu. I have agatam, I have come in this form as a swan. Why? Yushmat. Dharma vivakshaya, with a vivakshaya, with a desire to teach Yushmat, with a desire to teach you about Dharma. And here, Dharma doesn't mean ethics or righteousness, it means his spiritual teachings. So, I am Lord Vishnu, I have come here in the form of the swan to teach you the spiritual wisdom. He continues. Uh, Aham yogasya sankhyasya Aham yogasya sankhyasya Satyasyarthasya tejasaha Satyasyarthasya tejasaha Parayanam dvajashreshtaha Parayanam dvajashreshtaha Shriya kirtir damasya cha Shriya Kirtir Damasya Cha. Aham, and you have to connect it to the third line, Purayanam. I am the ultimate goal. I am the ultimate goal of what? Yogasya, of yoga, of spiritual practice. I am the ultimate goal, Sankhyasya, of spiritual wisdom. I am the ultimate goal of Sat. Yes, yeah, truth. I am the ultimate gro goal of ritasya. I'm breaking the words apart. Rita here may mean the cosmic order, intelligence. I am the ultimate goal of tejasaha, of brilliance. I am the ultimate goal, last line, of shriya, wealth, of kirtihi, glory, damasya, self control meaning everything you acquire in life for the sake of spiritual growth. That's the context. Whatever you do or acquire in life which contributes to your spiritual growth, Sri Krishna says, Aham Parayanam. I am the ultimate goal. We could paraphrase the whole verse and say, I am the ultimate goal of all aspects of spiritual growth. Dvajashreshtaha, he addresses the four sons of Brahma as best of Brahmanas. Then, time, time for Sri Krishna to go home, as it were. <laughs> What is that? Go home. That one movie, Phone Home. Was that the movie? No? What did he say? E.T. Go home. Yeah, E.T. Go home. Some, something like that, anyway. So, anyway, here Sri Krishna is going to go home. Mam bhajanti guna sarve. Mam bhajanti guna sarve. Nirgunam nirapekshakam. Nirgunam nirapekshakam. Suhridam priyamatmanam. Suhridam priyamatmanam. Samya sangada yoguna. Samya. Oh, Guna, he's not going home yet. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After making that bad joke. All right. 
so he says, Sarve gunaha. Gunas means world. Everything in the world, bhajanti mam. Again, bhaj has many meanings. Don't think worships. No, depends on me. Everything here depends on me. All gunas depend on me. Me, the one who is nirgunam, without gunas. Gunas depend on me, who am, I am nirgunam, and also I am nirapeksham, I have no dependencies. Gunas depend on me, I don't depend on gunas. I am the suhridam, the friend, the priyam atmanam, the beloved self. I am the self of all. Then, this, did I fix that? Yeah. Um, this last line is a little odd. You have to, I looked at the uh, commentary to figure it out. He, he says, Samya asangadayaha agunaha. There are some things which are not gunas, or they are not mere gunas. And what he gives are two gunas, and he says they're not gunas. The two gunas, he says, are samya, equanimity, and asanga, detachment, adayaha, etc. Samya, equanimity, and asanga, uh, detachment. Normally we think of them as gunas, but Sri Krishna clearly says agunaha. All of these are not gunas because, according to Sri Krishna, these are your essential nature. I don't want to get into the technical difference between sarupam and guna. There's a difference between who you are and what you have. You may or may not have certain gunas, but who you are, in essence, is samya. Your true nature has perfect equanimity, your true nature is a sangha, unattached to anything and everything. We're not talking about the mind and body, obviously. Mind and body have their problems. But the true self is samya and a sangha and other qualities which are not qualities. According to Sri Krishna, your essential nature is to have equanimity and detachment. Okay, he's still, ha still not leaving. No? I guess not, not till the very last verse. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Iti me chinna sandeha, iti me chinna sandeha, munaya sanakadayaha, munaya sanakadayaha. Sambhaja yitva paraya, sambhaja. Sabhaja. I think it should be sam. I think so. Um, Bhaktya granata sam, uh, samstavaihi. Bhaktya granata samstavaihi. Yeah, it cannot be sa bhajayatva. I think the grammar means, by grammar, it has to be sam bhajayatva. Okay, uh, start in the second line. Munayaha, those sages, sanaka, sanandana, sanasujata, etc., those four mind born sons, uh, sanakadayaha, those four mind born sons of Brahma, iti, thus, they were. Chinna Sandehaha. They were freed from their doubts. That's why they asked that you don't ask a question. If you don't have doubts, they had questions. Sri Krishna cleared their doubts. They were cleared, freed of their doubts, may by me. They were freed by their doubts by me. And then some I keep reading it some because grammatically I think it has to be. Some bhajayatwa, and then having worshipped me, paraya bhaktya, with great devotion, 
Agranata Samstavaihi. Worshipping me with, with great devotion, Samstavaihi, and hymns of praise, they were, ah, uh, Agranata. They were pleased. They were pleased to worship me with all these, these uh, prayers and, and hymns of praise and, and this verse is not spoken to Brahmaji and the four sons. Iti is like a close quote. So the story is over. All of this has been taught to Uddhava. Remember Uddhava? <laughs> At the beginning of the chapter. So Sri Krishna told the story of Brahmaji and his four sons and Sri Krishna in the form of a swan. Sri Krishna narrated that whole story to Uddhava. Now that story is complete and now Sri Krishna is no longer addressing Brahmaji and the four sons. With this verse, Sri Krishna is addressing Uddhava. It would be helpful if you said Uddhava as of no oh, Uddhava. It doesn't say, so we have to figure that out in context. O oh, Uddhava, those, those sages were freed of their doubts by me and they worshipped me with uh, prayers and words of praise. And that brings us to the very last verse of the chapter. Taraham pujita samyaka, Taraham pujita samyaka, Samstuta paramarshi bihi, Samstuta paramarshi bihi, Pratyayaya swakam dhamma, Pratyayaya swakam dhamma, Pashyata parameshtinaha, Pashyata Parameshtinaha. Aham, I, Sri Krishna is speaking, I was Pujitaha. I was worshipped Taihi by them, by the four sons of Brahma. I was worshipped how? Samyak. I was properly worshipped by the four sons of Brahma. And further, I was Samstutaha. I was praised. By whom? Paramarshibihi Parama Rishi. Paramarshibihi by those four great sages, the four sons of, of uh, Brahma. And then finally, Pratyayaya Sukam Dhamma. Pratyayaya, I departed. Sukam Dhamma to my own abode. I departed to my own abode. This is Sri Krishna. Go back to the story now. Remember, this is now Sri Krishna is addressing Uddhava and Sri Krishna in his human form. But he just got done telling the story in which in the form of a swan, he gave all this instruction to, uh, to the four rishis and Brahmaji. And they worshipped Sri Krishna in the form of a swan, right? So when Sri Krishna says paraya, uh, uh, pratyayaya, I departed, he departed in the form of a swan, he flew away. That's what he's saying. I flew off to my own abode. <laughs> Vaikuntha loka. Or some will say, go loka vrindavan. Vrindavan is an UP. Go loka vrindavan is... <laughs> <laughs> Some place else in the heavens. It's a heavenly domain. And all of this was Pashyataha, all of this was being seen, Parameshtinaha, by Parameshti, by Brahmaji. All of this was witnessed by Brahmaji. So Sri Krishna leaves, flies off into, what do they say? Flies off into the sunset. Sounds like a, another Hindi movie or something. <clears throat> anyway, and that brings an end to Sri Krishna's incarnation as a hamsa. This is the only place that occurs. It's a very wonderful chapter that 
And this is not the end of the Hamsa Gita, however, because the entire text is known as Hamsa Gita. So when we meet next time, and we have a, I'll have some announcements to make here in just a minute. Uh, when we meet next time, we'll pick up the next chapter. And you also know that I am choosing to include some chapters in our discussions and exclude some chapters in our discussion. So I think we're going to skip over a couple of chapters. I think we go from chapter 8 to chapter 11. And that, that's for two reasons. I'll explain maybe more when, in the next class why I skipped. Chapters 9 and 10 are skipped. Um, I'll give you some details about the contents of chapters 9 and 10. You'll discover that those ch the contents of those chapters are not very suitable to students of Advaita Vedanta. And that shouldn't surprise us. Um, most of you were here in a meditation session where again I made a reference to Adhikari Bheda. Every scripture has something for everyone. But if it's something for everyone, then maybe we can be a little selective in what we choose for ourselves. So when we meet next time, I'll explain why chapters 9 and 10 are left off, and then we'll continue with chapter 11. Now, some uh, important announcements. Uh, tomorrow, of course, our Vedanta class at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Shankara's brilliant uh, uh, Upadesha Sahasri, and then at 11 o'clock, immediately after Satsanga. And then I, I'll remind you that uh, next week we will be celebrating our 24th anniversary. So instead of our usual meditation session and Uddhava Gita class, please come at 10 o'clock. Our puja and homa will begin downstairs in a dining hall at 10 o'clock. And these rituals are done, puja and homas are done for the sake of blessing us all, blessing the ashram and the ashram community. So please join us for the uh, puja and homa. And then immediately after the puja and homa, then we'll come back up here. I'll have a nice discourse to uh, share with you. After the discourse, of course, we'll have lunch together and hopefully we'll have beautiful weather like today. We can sit outside on the grass and enjoy all of that. Um, to get ready for next week's celebration, we'd like to do some preparation here. I think mostly downstairs. We have to get chairs uh, set up properly downstairs for the uh, activities. We'd like some volunteers to stay, just moving chairs around. I think some carpets have to be rolled out. So if you can stay back for maybe 15, 20 minutes, please do stay back. You can meet Gopi. Is Gopi here? Gopi, stand up just so they can see who you are. You can meet Gopi in the, thank you, you can meet Gopi in the uh, lobby, and Gopi is coordinating the activities for this, um, for this anniversary. Thank you, Gopi. Wonderful to be celebrating 24 years here. I'm just uh, amazed that uh, so many years have elapsed. It'll be a very, uh, kind of a low-key celebration because we're like saving, what did we say? Saving up our energy for next year. 25. So we'll keep it a little bit low-key. Low-key meaning we're not having big, um, we're not, wow, we're not inviting dignitaries, big shots. Maybe. <sighs> <laughs> Years ago, we're, we're ending early today, so I can tell you a bad joke. <clears throat> I, I, years ago, I was about getting ready for an anniversary, and I thought to invite our U.S. Senator. I won't name him, but I had a connection, and I considered uh, inviting this uh, New York, this U.S. Senator to our celebration here. Uh, he's now indicted for fraud. <laughs> <laughs> so may maybe it's a, maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's a good thing not to invite dignitaries, and it certainly was true in, in that case. Okay, we'll conclude with our prayers. <laughs> Oh. 
ओम गणना गणपति गमे कविंगवीनामुपम्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मना ब्रह्मनस्पतहानशृन्वन उतबीरसारण महागणपत नम ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेरविभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम वसुदेवसुथ देव खम स चानुरमर्दनम देवखी परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगद्गुरु ओम सर्वे भवंतु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्थु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु भवेत् असथो मा सत्कमय थम सोमा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओ शाति 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 ओम तत्सत्